So welcome everybody. If you are joining us on YouTube, it's April 30th. So this is uh, the last day that we're going to be covering new material for pre-calculus in the spring 2020 semester. Um, so it's Thursday and next Tuesday is our formal last day of classes. But what I will do is I'll reserve that time period for questions. So um, we won't cover new material, but um, during this time I'll be available. So you can feel free to, to drop in if there's any questions about any outstanding things for the, for the remainder of the course. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick up where we left off uh, on Tuesday, talking about rational functions and um, some of the important properties and important things that we're gonna see. So um, just to give a brief recap, um, we were talking about rational functions and we define them to be the quotient of uh, polynomial functions. So a rational function is when you divide two polynomials. So you take a polynomial, um, that's your numerator, you take another polynomial as your denominator, you divide them, and the result is what we call a rational function. So we looked at lots of examples, um, things that look like this, right? So you have, you have a polynomial in your numerator, a polynomial in your denominator, um, and we looked at their graphs, what they look like, and what we decided was, Hey, it seems like some important points are going to be when the numerator is zero and when the denominator is zero. Those were those are two things that we picked out. Um, so we spent a lot of time thinking about the zeros of polynomial functions and how we use the factors to find the zeros. Um, and so we're extending those ideas to hey, when are uh, what are the zeros of our numerator and denominator and uh, what are some of the interesting things that, that pop out of that? And um, what we came up with last time was uh, if we have a polynomial function, if we have a zero in our numerator, then, um, then that may be a zero of the rational function, but only if the denominator is, is not zero. Okay, so, so if we can, let's jump over to to Desmos and, and give a, a quick uh, example of what that might look like. Okay, so, so if I have a rational function, right, so x plus one, x minus one, I'll write it out in factored form just so we can easily identify the zeros. We'll take this and we'll divide all of this by x minus three, okay? So we'll notice that um, the zeros of my numerator are negative one, positive one, and negative two. And so um, at each of these points, if I plug in negative two, negative one, or one, my denominator is not zero, okay? However, if I change this and I introduce a new zero in my denominator, something like an x minus one, you'll notice that this will not, this will not be a zero anymore, right? So, so what we had over here at x equals one, that was a zero before, but now that it's also a zero in the denominator, um, we should notice that, hey, this is now undefined, right? So the way we do this in Desmos is when we go to click on that point, we'll see that, yeah, this is undefined, right? So if I were to, if I were to plug in one, what I would get is zero divided by zero, um, and that is a, a problem for me. Okay, so we can check this on Desmos and it says right here f of one is in fact undefined, right? So we will get zero over zero. So it's important, right? So we want to make sure that when we're checking for zeros, it's very similar to that what we did for polynomials, but we do have to take an additional step and check it against the, the denominator, right? So it, it results in this nice property here. Um, we have called what I'm calling the zero quotient property. It's very similar to the zero product property, but when you divide two numbers, you're gonna get zero, if and only if the, the numerator is zero, but the denominator is not zero. Okay. So uh, what we would wanna do is, we're gonna end up thinking about um, uh, functions that look something like this, right? So we have uh, x plus two, uh, x squared minus four over x plus 12 equals zero. So, um, if I'm going to use the zero quotient property, what are the zeros of this 
of this rational function? Um, negative two and positive two, I think. Uh -huh. All right, so if you factor this, you get negative two here, and this would be positive two and negative two would both be present in here. Now, if I plug those into my denominator, do I get, do I get zero? No. You don't, know, right? So, so what this is telling us, this is a, a straightforward example. Hey, we can read off the zeros of our numerator, and then our denominator is, is not zero at those points. Um, so what if we try this one? What if we try B? A little bit more, more challenging. So we should probably graph the top part, right? Okay, so, what, so we want to graph this. So let's, let's go ahead and, and see if we can, we can just graph, if we're going to graph the top part, we can just graph the whole thing, right? So 2x cubed plus 5x squared. And then we have minus 23x plus 10. This is our numerator. And then I'm gonna divide all of this by x squared minus 2x plus five. Okay. So it looks like when I, when I graph this, this is what it looks like, kind of weird. Um, and reading it off, it looks like my zeros are negative five, one half, and two. So from this graph, I guess my question is, um, if I think about the zero quotient property, um, are these all of my zeros? I mean, are there, are there additional ones? How do I know that if I have them all, or are there some holes in my graph somewhere? Hmm. I think that's all the zeros. And so how do you how do you know that? Like what what kind of evidence do you have that suggests that those would be all of them? Um, well, cuz it wouldn't it graphs them, right? So it would it would uh graph them if there were other ones. Okay. So uh, so uh, I mean you're saying just visually you don't see any of the others? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what if I said just because there's three of them, like what's so special about there being three? Is there somewhere that this three is relevant in our equation? That's the um, what is it called? The high. That's the degree. Yeah, the of degree the of the numerator, right? So this numerator. So. This is going to be zero in at most three places, right? So it's a degree three polynomial, so it's going to have at most three zeros. Right? And so what we get is right, we get these three points. Now the question is, well, what's happening with the denominator? Right? So I think about this x squared minus 2x plus 5. Right? If I just look at that one separately, if I look at my denominator, What's something that we notice about that? Um, it's second degree. Mm -hmm. And what else do you notice? Like, what would be particularly relevant to our current discussion, right? So if we're thinking about this quotient property, we want our numerator to be zero. We want our denominator to not be zero. It doesn't intersect the x-axis at all? Yeah, so this is never zero, right? So what this is telling you is no matter what you plug in for x, any x value that you plug in will never give you zero. Right, so you're never gonna end up with this rational function right here. You never divide by zero, right? So you'll never end up dividing by zero. And so when I look at my graph, we observe that, hey, yeah, all my zeros up here, so nothing funny happened, right? I didn't get any sort of things like canceling out or holes like we saw before. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't really have any, any places that it's undefined, right? So this is a nice example of a rational function that 
we're not going to divide by zero, so we get some sort of nice behavior, right? We can see it. It almost looks like a cubic function. Yeah. Okay. So um, skipping on, let's go ahead and and let's try um, let's try this one right here. Okay. So so before we graph it, is there is there something that we could do to this one quickly? We can expand the top. Other way. Factor, right? Yeah. So that's going to be, let's see, x plus 13, x minus 2. Let's see, x plus 13 and x minus 2. So, so negative 2 times 13 is negative 26. And if I add them, I get this. All right. So, so what would you expect to happen in this, in part C here? Our zeros are going to be um negative 13 mm -hmm. and but it's not going to be two because that would make it um the bottom divide by zero okay so these these would effectively cancel out right mm -hmm. um but what would we expect to see in our graph there could we, is is two in the domain of this graph like would i be able to plug in two i think so okay so so what this should be is, is this should be the same as x plus 13 divided by x minus 3. Yeah. All right, so let's go check this out. All right, so we have some quick work here. Um, so, so we see that it factors this way. Um, and we're going to graph x plus 13 over x minus 3. And we'll see if we can see the same thing, right? So here's x plus 13. We're going to divide this by x minus 3. And then on another line, so this is our green line. And then we'll graph x plus 13 times x minus 2. We'll divide all that by x minus 2 times x minus 3. All right, so we'll we have both of these graphs. And so let's go ahead and I guess we can leave this down here. Um, okay, so it looks visually to me like they look pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can investigate a little bit further. Um, so a point that might be interesting to us is down here when x equals 2, right? So when x equals 2, you can see right here we're at sort of this point right here, right? And at x equals 2, the green line tells me when I plug in 2, I get 15, right? If I can get it there, yeah. 2 comma negative 15. So we'll call this f of x. Okay. And then we'll ask, what is f of 2? That's negative 15. So let's do the same thing for this function. Let's call this one g of x. And let's ask, hey, what is g of 2? Right, so if I do this down here, I get 2 comma undefined, right? So see how it's Desmos is putting that open circle right there? Yeah. So when I look at these two, uh, when I look at these two functions, they're the same at every single point except when x equals two. Okay, so so what we'd have to do when we are when we're writing this out by hand and we're thinking about these things, we have to put an additional condition on this. We have to say, well, um, here. So so we have to say, you know, these are the same when x is not equal to 2. Okay, so, so depending on the way our original function is defined, we have to recognize that 2 is not in the domain. So when we see this happening, when we see these 2s, this x minus 2 cancels, and this x minus 2, they, they cancel each other out, that's when we get a hole. We would call it a hole in our graph. So if you factor your numerator and denominator and you get these things to cancel, that's when you get a hole. Okay. Okay. So, um, so looking at these questions, let me clear off my my annotations here. 
Um, so when we're looking at this, right, we see that, hey, if we get, if we have a sort of a shared factor and it cancels out, we get a whole. Otherwise, we can sort of pick out our zeros. Um, but, and right, so here's what we say, right? So, so whenever you get, um, whenever you get something of the form zero over zero, you're gonna have a whole, but, um, but not always, okay? So, so my question here for you is, can you come up with some examples where um, you have a whole when the factors cancel? And can you come up with some examples where factors cancel and you don't have a whole? Hmm. Okay, so we can go and like, we can play with stuff on, on Desmo. So, so we said if factors cancel, you get a whole. So you, you tell me what to type and I'll, I'll type it out here and we can sort of experiment. Uh, hmm. Say, I guess X minus two times uh, five over X minus two. times seven. So we have x minus two times five or x minus two times seven, right? And so we can do it like this. All right, so it looks like our graph is a straight line and um, I don't observe any holes yet, but it seems like if we were to go to exactly at two, then yeah, this graph is gonna have a hole in it, right? So we're gonna have a, a hole right there at, at two. Okay. So do you think you could have the same thing where you have a, a zero over zero, but you don't have a whole? What if you, instead of um, add, multiplying five and seven, you added them? So uh, this would produce something where there's, we're not canceling anymore, right? So we're not multiplying. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a zero, right? So this is really what this, what you've done now is you've created the graph x plus three divided by x plus five. Okay, so that's that's the graph you've created now. So we see that we have this vertical asymptote at five, we have a, a zero at negative three. Okay, so we didn't, didn't, that didn't seem to do it. But so what can I do to keep a zero at two, but maybe, you know, sort of modify what's going on here. So I still want to have this X minus two and I still want to have this X minus two, but. We don't want it to end up uh, with any holes in it. Yeah, I want something else to happen. Yeah. So like, so like what I'm thinking is maybe if I add in like an, another X minus two in the, in the numerator. I don't know, maybe we don't even need, maybe we don't even need these. All right, so like these are gonna cancel and I get, I get a, looks like I still have a hole at two and then my graph's changing, right? So this looks like the graph of X minus two. And then I can like, I could put another X minus two. I, I could kind of keep putting these X minus twos in there, right? So, but in every case, I'm still getting this hole. Right, I'm still getting this hole, so. So do you, you think you could modify it in a different way that maybe you don't get that hole? Something else happens? Uh, could you try like raising it to a power? No, wait, that's what we just did. Yeah, all right, so that was weird. Um, so like this, yeah, so this would be like two, three. We just did. Yeah. Hmm. And so that kept that hole there. But where was I raising it to a power? Well, because if you just, mul you kept multiplying x minus two by itself, that's the same as just raising it to a power. Yeah, but uh, I did that in the numerator, right? Oh, so, hmm. So if you did it in the denominator, would that change something? So 
So if I do that in the denominator, is that is that different? That seems different to me, right? Yeah, but it probably still looks uh, open at two. Well, where's this is two right here? Yeah. Well, we've still got a vertical asymptote, but it's yeah. not a hole. It's not a hole, right? Yeah, so we get something different there, right? So now we have a vertical asymptote, it's not a hole. So I guess my question is, well, what if I did it to both of them? Hmm. Right, so, so like if I made this squared and this squared, do I still have a hole? Do. So what if I made this like cubed? And that one was squared. Do I have a hole? Do. So uh, what if I made this one to like the fourth power? So that looks like something different, right? That looks like a vertical asymptote. Yeah. What are you noticing here? I mean, do you notice any patterns of things that are kind of popping up? Um, um, no, I don't think so, other than it's, we're not getting any, we're still getting the, either a hole or an asymptote. Yeah, we're going to get a hole or an asymptote, but maybe you can tell me when do you get a hole and when do you get an asymptote? Um, let's see. Do you get a hole when the numerator is bigger than the denominator? Um, so what do you mean about when you say the numerator, what do you mean? Or the power. Yeah, the power, right? So this exponent, if this exponent in the numerator is bigger or the same, I guess, then what do we get? Uh, a hole. Hole. And then if it's small, if the degree in the, this, this exponent or this multiplicity on the zero in the denominator is bigger, we are going to get an asymptote. Asymptote, right? Yeah, so that's sort of a way for us to to figure out what's happening, right? So, so observing this, just sort of sort of playing around with these exponents, what we've seen is, oh yeah. Um, so sometimes they get holes, sometimes they get exponent, uh, sometimes they get vertical asymptotes, and it seems to correlate with how things cancel, right? So if I if I cancel some things and and some stuff is left over in the denominator, meaning the degree there was bigger. I'll have a vertical asymptote. If the degree in the numerator is bigger, so there'll be something left over in the numerator after I cancel, that's when I get a hole. Hmm. Okay. And so, so it seems like we were able to, to do some, some stuff there. So is that only when it's just the like the same expression over the other same other expression? So if the numerator is the same as the denominator other than the power? Then that's gonna be a whole oh, there could be other stuff in there too, is what, what you're saying. So so we could have like we could have uh, all um, right, so we could have another another expression in there. And so what we're going to be looking at is at two, right? At two, what we'd expect to see is a vertical asymptote. And then if the power in the numerator is bigger, we would expect to see um, a hole at two. Okay. Right, so there could be, there could be other stuff multiplied in there, if that's your, if that's your question, yeah. right? So we could have, we could have stuff that looks like this. All right, so this has a, a vertical asymptote at one, and then we have a hole at x equals two. All right, and alternatively, we have zeros at these points over here. So let, I'm gonna let you try, try out some of these, right? So, so looking at this one right here, is there a, is there a place, can we identify the, the zeros and the vertical asymptotes and the holes? So the bottom is gonna fact, the denominator is gonna factor as x plus four, x minus four. Mm -hmm. And then the top.
So then the top's gonna have zero, uh, gonna factor as x plus four, x minus a third times something else. Mm -hmm. Times three. Yeah, three because, right, that's your, that's your leading coefficient. Yeah, so that's how it's gonna factor. So, so our numerator would be, this right, so we'd have really quickly right. So you'd have three x plus four x minus a third, and so where would your zeros, holes, asymptotes you'd expect them to be? Uh, negative four. Is a is a what? Let's see. Um, it's the same. So is it going to be a hole? Yeah, right, so you have 3x plus 4, and then you said x minus a third. Yep. And all of this divided by x plus 4, x minus 4. All right, so, so what we should expect to see is at this x plus 4, those are gonna cancel, so we'll have a hole there. We should have a zero at 1 third, and then what's going to be positive for? Um, that's going to be a asymptote. Yeah, that would be our, our vertical asymptote, right? So, so by going through and sort of picking out where our zeros are, comparing the zeros in the numerator and the denominator, we can identify what our zeros are, what our holes on our graph are, and what our vertical asymptotes are. Right, so just kind of going through doing this analysis, that, that helps us out, right? So of course we have Desmos, but then we want to combine these two worlds, right? We want to be able to use the computing technology, but then also make sense out of what's happening, right? And sort of be able to identify when things go wrong, that something doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, so what about, this one over here, this one's already factored for us, part C. All right, let's see. So. So I don't think we're going to have any um, holes or anything. Or wait, no, yes, we are. Uh, so negative one is going to be an asymptote. Uh -huh. And um, let's see, it would be eight sixths or four thirds would be one as well would be a, an asymptote for this Ex one right here? Yeah. Okay. And then what are our zeros? Our zeros are gonna be, let's see, um, one half. Okay, so that comes from here, right? Negative seven and four thirds. Okay. So, so let's recap. So zero is at one half, negative seven, and four thirds. Oh, and wait, we've got four thirds on the bottom too. Hmm. So that's going to be a hole. That'd be a hole, right? So, so this one, right? So this one right here, this one should be a hole, right? Because it cancels. And then we should have um, our zeros, right? So our zeros are going to be. Um, let me color code this, right? So, so in green, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a, a hole because those cancel out, right? So this goes away. 
Um, so these two are gonna really are the same thing, right? So they produce the same zero. So those are gonna be holes. Um, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote provided by this one right here, which is gonna be at negative one. And then our zeros um, are going to be, um, sorry, clicking around here. So our zeros are gonna be here, right? So these are gonna be zeros at, right, at one half and at negative seven, right? So, so you can see from this, from this setup right here, we're able to identify what are the zeros, what are the holes, and then what are the vertical asymptotes. Yeah. Right, so just from from this structure so far, without any without any computations, where we can just look at this and say, yeah, I, I know what's going to happen. Right? I should be able to to reason through this and use some of my knowledge to see what I'm expecting. And now, if I wanted to visualize this whole graph, I could stick it into Desmos and um, and then see what it looks like. And so it depends yeah. on, on what we want, want to do here. Um, okay. All right, so, uh, so what I've been doing, I mean, we've, this whole other section is called uh, vertical asymptotes, right? So, um, so what we are, what we've been doing, we kind of already talked through how to find how to find vertical asymptotes, right? So in all of these graphs down here, what you want to do is you want the you want there to be a zero in the denominator, and you don't want it to get totally canceled out by the numerator, right? So if that, like you said, if the degree is a little bit bigger, then um, then our our uh, we're going to have a hole, and if the degree of the denominator is bigger, then we're going to have a vertical asymptote. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so one of the other types of asymptotes that we could have is one that's called a, a horizontal asymptote. All right, so, um, so a horizontal asymptote um, could be something that like this in this picture. And um, what we wanna do is we wanna look at some, some different uh, equations and see if we can identify if they have uh, horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so um, let's take a look at some of these functions here and we'll see if we can identify any vertical or horizontal asymptotes. Right, so, so our first example, we'll just um, make a quick one here, one over x plus one. Um, so vertical asymptote at negative one, does it have a horizontal asymptote? Um, it doesn't look like it. So let's let's go back and sort of think about this, right? So a, a horizontal asymptote. What it what we're doing here is we're thinking about hey, when our outputs are sorry, when our inputs get really 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 big, do our outputs get close to some number, right? So so in this case, it seems like when our inputs get really really big, our outputs are getting closer and closer to three, and then when our outputs get really big in the negative direction, our our or when our inputs get really, really big in the negative direction, our outputs get really close to three as well. Okay. So, so for this one, when my outputs get really, really, really big, do we get zero? close to something? To zero, yeah, right? So, so it seems like in both directions, we've got, we've got hey, when I get really big, um, we're getting close to, to zero. My, my outputs get really big in the negative direction, we're also getting close to zero. Yeah, so this would be an example of, hey, we have a vertical asymptote at negative one, we have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's think about G of X. Do you think, let's try to make a prediction. Um, so what are, the, what are the vertical asymptotes for G of X? Uh, negative one and two. Yeah, right. So negative one and two. And what would you expect the horizontal asymptote to be? So think about it this way: when you plug in really big numbers for x, what are your outputs going to be? Uh, very small. Mm -hmm. And close to zero. Zero, right? So if I were to look at this one, um, I would expect similar behavior, right? So in my denominator, we're going to have x plus one. And then we have another x minus two, right? So 
if I look at this. Right, so when our outputs get really, really, really big, our when our inputs get really, really, really big, our outputs are going to be really, really, really small, close to zero. Um, okay, so what about for C? What do you expect? Vertical asymptotes, can you identify any vertical asymptotes? Any? Negative, negative one and three. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, do you want to double? Negative one is going to be a hole. Yeah, right. So negative one and three are the zeros of our denominator, but negative one is ends up being the whole. We have a visitor in the background. Zoe, what are you doing? All right, so think about these other ones. I'm gonna go, I have to go grab her, but um, think about these other ones and then and then try to try to say to predict what's going to be your vertical horizontal asymptotes, um, then stick them into Desmos. Okay, so try out D, E, F, and I'll come back in a minute. Okay. So I think for C the it's a zero again for the horizontal yeah. asymptote. Yeah. Um for D, so we've got a hole at one yeah. and four thirds would be a or negative four thirds would be a vertical asymptote. But the graph it doesn't look like zero is the horizontal asymptote. All right, it's not. What does it look like it is? Uh, I'm not sure, maybe 0 0.4? Close, yeah. So it's actually going to be one third should be the should be the horizontal asymptote there. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So what did you? So it seems like we we could get other numbers that aren't zero, right? Mm -hmm. So what's different? So what if I look at part D? So we saw this one was zero. A was a zero. That's our horizontal asymptote. B, we had a zero. C, we had zero again. And then D was the first time we didn't have zero. We had something else. So, so what changed? What changed in part D that we didn't have in parts A, B, and C? The numerator was raised to a power. Okay. And um, the denominator has a coefficient, not one. Mm. So if I thought about those as polynomials, and I expanded them out. Could you tell me some information about this numerator polynomial, like x minus one squared? What would be the like? What's the degree of that polynomial? What's the leading coefficient? Things like that. Um, so it's the degree. It's going to be second degree. Mm -hmm. And the leading coefficient is going to be one. One. Yeah. And what about the denominator? The denominator, it's going to be the degree is going to be, um, it's going to be second degree. The leading coefficient is going to be three. Yeah, all right. So, all right. So, so they were both quadratics, right? Both numerator and denominator. Mm -hmm. What about up here? It looks like this was a degree one and this was degree two, right? The denominator was degree two. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So let's keep going. Uh, so in E, what do you uh, what do you expect to see? 
All right, let's see. So negative one is going to be a asymptote. Uh -huh. And three is as well. Yep. And then the horizontal, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, I'm getting the graph up for the horizontal one. It looks like zero. Yeah, it is zero. So how do you, so before we graph it, how do you think you could tell? Hmm. Any ideas so far? I'm not sure if it's that the numerator is raised to a power, but it's probably that the coefficient, there's no, um, non-one coefficients in the denominator. Hmm. Okay, I mean, so we're, we're, we're making some progress here. So let's try the next one, let's try F, right? So you think it has to do something with the coefficients, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so before we even say what the, the asymptotes are or anything like that, um, so the coefficients on both of these are, are negative two on the numerator, the leading coefficient of the denominator is negative three. So what would you expect to have happen here? Um, what do you mean? For a horizontal asymptote. So your conjecture about leading coefficients here, you said if, if one of them was non-zero or non-one, then you get something to happen. So I'm guessing it's gonna be, um not z our horizontal asymptote is not going to be a zero okay that's correct it's not going to be zero where do you think it's going to be though um i'm going to hmm. negative one third maybe okay let's try that so negative 2x squared divide by negative three x squared plus, the plus one. No, I think it's plus three. Plus three. Okay. And no, so it looks like it's maybe one third again. Just looking at the graph. Wait, no, maybe two thirds? Two thirds, so I could do this, right? So I could, I could write y equals two thirds and then I could make it that dashed line. So that seems about right, two thirds, right? So where is do you it, see a two thirds in there? Is it the leading coefficients divided by each other? Yeah, right, that seems to be popping up, right? All right, so when we came over here, we did a, this leading coefficient was a one, and this one was a three, right? So that was one third. Now if I divide these two, it would be two thirds. But that didn't always happen, right? Because over here, the leading coefficients were one and one, and the asymptote here was zero, and this one was zero, and this one was also zero. Hmm. Hmm. So, so when do we do that, right? So if you look at the ratio, right, if you just divide the leading coefficients, it doesn't, it seems like you do that sometimes, like for F you do that and for D you do that, but sometimes you don't do that. So, so what times, so what, I, what else should I be looking at to say, hey, sometimes I'm gonna divide the leading coefficients and sometimes I'm just not gonna divide them. Um, if both, if the numerator and the denominator maybe are um, at least second degree. Okay. So, uh, so it's like something down here in H. They're both at least second degree. So we should expect to have a horizontal asymptote at, at one. Uh, maybe. Let's try it out. Yeah. 
So here's x cubed plus one over x squared plus one. Do you have do you have a, a horizontal asymptote? No. So it looks like this one doesn't even have one. Yeah. These other ones did. Do you think this one? G, we didn't look at G yet. Do you think this one has one or not? Um, I would guess it would. Okay, and why do you think that? Um, let's see. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing because more of them than not have had it. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm, I'll jump in here. I'll, I'll offer some, some insight. So, so what we're thinking about is what happens when your, your inputs are really, really big. Okay. So when you plug in really, really, really big numbers, um, if I plug in like a billion in for X is one that much is that is this plus one really going to affect a billion right so if you had a billion dollars and you added one more dollar bill is that like such a big deal to you no no right so so this term for really 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 big numbers this term right here is much more important than a plus one okay so when i plug in a billion or a trillion or, or really large numbers, if I raise them to the fourth power, okay, so something like in G here, if I raise them to the fourth power, that's gonna be an enormous number. Um, and if I raise it to the third power, also a very big number, but not quite as big, right? So, so raising something a billion to the fourth power is gonna be super ginormous, and uh, raising it to the third power is only gonna be sort of ginormous, okay? so. So raising it to the fourth power is eventually for really large numbers, this, whatever I'm plugging into the fourth power is going to be so much bigger than to the third power that it's going to make this insignificant. Okay. All right, we're going to think about it anyway. So when you're plugging in really, really, really big numbers, the terms that matter are the highest, the degree, the leading term. So when we think about polynomials, in that section, we, we talked about identifying the leading term and the leading coefficient, and now that becomes really important here. So when I'm thinking about horizontal asymptotes, really the only thing that I care about is, is the leading terms here, right? So for, for F, I really only care about this X squared term, and I only care about this X squared term in the denominator. Now, with that said, if I come over here for some of these, it looks like the degree of my denominator is bigger, right? So this is a one, and then this is an x squared, okay? So if I take one and I divide by, say, like x squared for really large values of x, that's gonna produce a small number. And similarly down here, this has degree one, and this has degree two. So the degree two is gonna grow a whole lot faster than a degree one, and so what's going to happen is eventually the denominator is just going to be so much bigger than the numerator that those numbers are going to be really, really, really small. Okay. okay. Alternatively, over here, it seems like the degree of my numerator is bigger. And what we saw when the degree of our numerator was bigger was we didn't really get close to any numbers. We just kind of kept growing in both directions. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so with, with me saying that, do you think you could come up with maybe three different situations for what might happen for horizontal asymptotes? So if the numerator is bigger, then there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote, right? If the if, degree of the numerator is bigger. Okay. If the degree of the denominator is bigger, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be zero. Mm -hmm. And if they're the same, then it's going to be a non-zero number, or then it's going to be the to the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. That's exactly right. So when they're the, when the degrees are the same, you're going to look at that those those that ratio or that that division. Yep. And so uh, um, so. What we've, what we've just done here, you've just sort of summarized 
um, how to find horizontal asymptotes for rational functions, right? So, so it depends on the degrees of the numerator, the degree of the denominator, and then, uh, and then if they're the same, you look at the coefficients. Okay. Um, so if we come down here, right? So, so what I like to do is is have us sort of create a little uh, a little summary sheet here, and sort of we can we can talk through this together, right? So, so we've we have identified zeros, holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes as sort of four of our of our important pieces, and. Um, when we're looking for zeros, what was it that we wanted to do? We said, I'm going to have a zero when the numerator um, equals zero. Or, and, yeah. In what? So the numerator is zero and uh, the denominator is not. Is not, right? Yeah. So, so you have a whole when um, they're both zero. Uh huh. So the numerator is zero, the denominator is zero. Sometimes that's a whole, sometimes that's a vertical asymptote. Oh yeah. If uh, the denominator has a higher power, then it's a um, it's an asymptote, I believe. That's right. So when you look at the factor, right? So the multiplicity of that factor. So if you have like a um, Right, so you're gonna have you're gonna have a vertical um, a vertical asymptote. So let me come up with some more examples here. Right, so so a hole is gonna be something that is like this. Right, so you have x minus two cubed over x minus two squared. Right, this is gonna produce a hole. And then alternatively, if I flip that around, right? So if I had like x minus one over x minus one squared, that's gonna be a, an asymptote. It's gonna be a vertical asymptote, right? So if you looking around and you looking at that particular factor, if the degree of or the multiplicity of that factor is higher in the numerator, you're going to get a whole. If it's higher in the denominator, you're going to get a vertical asymptote. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then sort of the three situations for horizontal asymptotes you just laid out for us, right? So you have a horizontal asymptote um, at zero when the degree of the denominator is bigger. You have a horizontal asymptote you don't have a horizontal asymptote when the degree of the numerator is bigger. And then you have a, uh, if your degrees are the same, you have a horizontal asymptote where you look at the, the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay, so, um, so what we're gonna do to practice here, right? So, so a lot of the questions on the, on the web work, are gonna be um, like this, right? So we're gonna be given a, a rational function and it'll say, hey, where are your zeros? Where are the holes? Where are the vertical asymptotes? Where are the horizontal asymptotes? Okay. So, okay. So for f of x, then zero would be at nine. Oh, let's see. Um, there would be a the vertical asymptote at negative four. Yep. And let's see. Let's see. So horizontal asymptotes would be. Uh, let's see. So the degree of the divider at uh, zero. Mm -hmm. And is that it? Yeah. Do you have any holes in the graph? I don't think so. And so those are kind of, that's the hardest one, right? So, so just by graphing it, I can, I can tell a lot about this function, right? So um, just by graphing it, I can see that I'm going to have a zero at nine, 
I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative four. I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at zero, right? So those things are visual. And now the last one, it's, it's hard to see if I have any holes, right? Because they don't really visually show up that well on Desmos. You have to kind of find them. Um, but what I see here is I don't have any of that cancellation, right? So I don't have, I'm not canceling any factors and leaving anything left over. Um, so I'm not going to have a hole. But yeah, that's, so that, that analysis, what you went through is great. Um, it's just the, the holes, right? A lot of that you can do visually if you, if you want to graph it. The holes are a little bit harder, right? You have to identify those a lot of the time algebraically because um, they're hard to find visually. Okay, so what about, what about B? Let's see if we can do zeros, holes, or asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so I don't think there are any zeros. Um, there's going to be a hole at zero. Okay. And let's see. Um, vertical asymptotes will be at. Let's see. At um, negative five and three, mm -hmm. and then horizontal asymptotes would be at zero. So, uh, so you said um, negative five and positive three. Yeah. I don't think that's quite right. So let's, so I'm, not, I'm sort of taking notes on that on my iPad over here. So, so let's factor, so you're close. I think you flipped your signs though. So let's, let's take a look at the, at the work here. All right, so g of x was this function, x squared over x cubed minus two x squared minus 15 x. So, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna go through and I, I factored it. Um, and so what we're going to see here is, it comes uh, up. did I make a, did I, maybe I made a mistake, but. I thought it was plus 2x squared, but I could be wrong. So, plus 2x squared. All right, so I'm, I made a mistake there, yeah. So this, I copied this down, so it should be plus 2x squared here. And mm -hmm. so then this would be a, you're right, it would be a plus 5 and a minus 3. Okay, so you said it. You said it right, but this is okay. We'll 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 get this on the on the board. Yeah. So so what you're gonna see here when I cancel, right? So so by canceling this, I'm canceling this out of the denominator, and I'm gonna cancel this off out of the numerator, right? So one of them. So you said there's a hole at zero. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's correct, right? So you can see that that for this whole at x equals zero, we're looking at these two terms here, right? So, so we're, these are the same factors, but the multiplicity is higher in the numerator. And then these are both gonna be vertical asymptotes, right? So they don't cancel out with anything. And what about your horizontal asymptote? Zero, because the degree is higher in the denominator. Yeah, so three, you look at three and two, so three has ended up being bigger than two, um, and so you're gonna get a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And so this is, this is pretty nice because, like, I don't, I don't need, all right, so I can plug it into Desmos, but um, a lot of the time, what you just wanna be able to do is sort of, is sort of sketch your graph and sort of see what it looks like and so um, what this tells me is, right, I can sort of go through and I should be able to, to sketch a graph reasonably quickly um, for what this is gonna look like, right? So, so let's see if we can, if we can do that. Right, so, so when I look at this, I know that I should have, right, so I should have a hole right here at zero and I should have these vertical asymptotes. And so what's the, what's the behavior of my function? What do you, what do you think? 
right? So, so some options here, right? What could happen is like, it could be, it could be something like this, right? Like that could be my function. Mm -hmm. Or, or right, it could be, you know, it, it could be something else, right? So it could, like, like it could be, could be something like this. So do you think, do you think we can piece it together how we might be able to tell what, what it looks like? Hmm. And so this is kind of, this is the idea that we're going to be thinking about in, in calculus. Okay. So, so if I plug in, right. So, so when you look at this, you're going to want to think about um, sort of what happens when you're really, really close to these places, but not quite at them. Um, hmm. So if you plug in a number, say that's over here, that's less than negative five, are you gonna get something that's positive or are you gonna get something that's, that's negative? Right? Are your numbers gonna be positive or negative? If we plug in another number smaller than negative five? Yeah, right, into this. Like if I were to plug in negative six, right? So, so what we know, what we know is that our function over here really looks like x over x plus five and x minus three. Right, so, so effectively at all at all places, um, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to look like this, except that zero, which we've already accounted for. So one of the things that that we're going to do in calculus is we're going to think about hey, if we're positive or negative, so if I were to plug in a negative six, my numerator is gonna be negative, right? Mm -hmm. And then my denominator, I'm gonna get a negative number times a negative number. That's a positive number. Mm -hmm. And then negative over positive is negative. So what I know is that over in this region right here, right, so, so over here, I have to be a negative number, right? So like, I would expect my graph to do something like this. And then when I, then like, it looks like I have these other regions, right? So, so I have, I have another region that I want to think about, which is in between negative five and zero. So if I were to plug in something like negative two, I'd get negative in my numerator, then I would get positive negative. Right? So I, I would expect my graph, I would have a negative over a negative. So I expect my graph over here to be positive. Then we're gonna switch again, and, and then we're gonna have a negative, and then we would switch again and have a positive. So, so as I'm graphing it, this is sort of what I would expect my graph to look like, okay? So, so in calculus, what we'll do is we can use actually some other tools that we call derivatives to figure out when our functions are, are going up and when they're increasing, when they're decreasing, and sort of where they bend, if we call that concavity. Um, sort of a little, uh, an, another preview, right, an insight into what we would do in calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, so uh, so jumping back over, this is, um, so this stuff, what we did today, this is gonna be enough to get you through, definitely through the, the homework. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to these optimization questions, but again, I'm not gonna, I won't ask you about these on, on the exam. If you do wanna go through them on your own, I think that they're accessible. Um, and so these are the, these are the types of questions. Um, we actually do the same question in calculus, um, but, um, we add parameters in here for some okay. of these numbers. So, um, but if you wanted to go through this and, and just use Desmos to help out, um, you know, I, I say here in place of calculus, we'll use Desmos to help us out. Um, and so you could do that too. So these are, these are both sort of classic calculus type questions that you would see. All right, so, uh, so, so we're a little, final, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the final exam opens up Sunday and is uh, open all week in Desmos, not Desmos, uh, WebWork. WebWork, yep. And we, we can use Desmos on that. Yep. Yep, so I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm just sort of, I'm leaving it up to you, right? So it just, we, you'll have all your notes available to you, and then you'll have, you'll have Desmos available. Okay. 
right? So the, the only restriction that I'm placing on you is the, the time on there, right? So we'll have, so you'll have two hours and um, there'll be approximately 30 questions. So, so um, I think I have slightly more than 30 questions in there right now, something like 32 or something like that. Um, but I'm gonna, before Sunday, I'm gonna take a once over again. So, so the, the number of questions would be just over 30 or maybe right on 30, somewhere right in that range. Um, and then you'll have two hours to do, to do them all. And it will cover, um, it'll pretty much go in order, right? So it'll start with general functions, linear functions, quadratic functions. Um, then we'll go into trigonometry, exponential functions and logarithms, triangle trigonometry, polynomials and rational functions. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, you can get, uh, you can contact me by email. Um, Right, so you sort of know how to get in touch with me. And then just as a general drop-in session, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this time open on Tuesday, um, not with the expectation to cover new material, um, but just if, if you or if anybody who's watching on YouTube, if they want um, uh, help with anything, then we'll leave that, that time open. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, Sounds thanks good. for Thank sticking with us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, have a good day. And then uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right. You too. Bye. Bye.